everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. All right, my brothers, all right, my sisters, whoever's going to come in here and watch this. Look, before I get started, let me say, help me trigger the algorithm. That's all I'm asking you to do right now for me. Help me trigger the algorithm. By now, y'all see how I'm coming. I know y'all see the value in my content, although y'all still don't like me. I get it. I'm one of them type dudes, right? You know what I'm saying? You don't like me. You don't like my delivery style. I get it. But what I'm saying is needed, and you know what I'm saying is needed. So if you care about your people like you claim to care about them, help me get the message out. If you care about humanity like you claim to care, help me get the message out. You know, trigger the algorithm. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. That's all I'm asking you to do right now. Now, this particular topic, man, it just hit me last night, right? I'm, I'm sitting there and... I'm looking at the progression of our people and some stuff going on. Some stuff I'm going to talk about, like dealing with these crooked and corrupt black politicians and public figures and stuff, you know. And I hate being a dude that sit around and make videos uh, exposing our dysfunction because I don't want to do that. But I found it interesting that no matter how much we let each other down, as long as you come wrapped in the right language, we will continue to support you. It's the strangest damn thing I've ever seen. And then for some reason, the issue that John Henry, Henry Clark had with Minister Farrakhan pops into my head. He, he let it known clearly before he died that he did not like Farrakhan. He couldn't stand him. Farrakhan did the Million Man March in 1995. A year later, John Henry Clark had a great debate with some, some academic female, you know what I'm saying, that was aired and recorded and you know few people was in the audience you know what i'm saying but it wasn't you know most people didn't even know it happened i mean completely overshadowed by by farrakhan you know and i think to some degree it, that rubbed him the wrong way i think he honestly believed that he should have had more shine you know and um i mean the man stood 10 toes down down on what he believed in though you know i i, I give john henry clark that you know what i'm saying i mean he he was unapologetic about his positions uh, but he was Afrocentric, and that's that, that, that. I think that was his downfall. I think being Afrocentric actually hurt him, and I'm gonna explain that in a second. See, Farrakhan was religious based. John Henry Clark was Afrocentric, and the problem with being Afrocentric is whether you want to admit it or not, black people have no kinship to Africa. We have no tie. No, we have no emotional ties. To Africa. Now you might not want to admit that. You know the academic community shoved down, Af shoved Africa down our throats. They tell us that we from Africa. You know all this stuff. You know everybody has a place of origin. But the truth of the matter is, black people don't feel that way. First of all, we have no place of origin. Not black people in general. We are from everywhere. We are we are the original Earthlings. We are literally from anywhere and everywhere on this planet. So trying to consolidate us to a single place of origin is just a flaw. It's a, it's a flaw in philosophy. It's a flaw in ideology. It's a flaw in education. It's a flaw. And the, and the biggest issue that you have is that if a person don't feel you from within, you have a, you have a spiritual disconnect right there. And I think John Henry Clark had a spiritual disconnect with black people, despite how gangster he was at, at, at trying to represent us. I mean, the man stood 10 toes down. I ain't gonna lie. He did. He did that, bro. I mean, watch that great debate, man. I mean, you know, he, he the man was on fire, but everything was Africa, 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 Africa. And this is the problem, man, because see, we have a kinship to people, right? Black Americans treat all black people like brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? It's other black people that act like we are foreigners to them. Act like they don't want to be connected to us. And this is due to the systemic and structural racism of America. But we treat everybody 
as though they are our brothers and sisters, regardless of where they're from. You know what I'm saying? We treat all black people the same. They just don't treat us the same. So we have a sort of spiritual kinship with people, with black people. We don't have a spiritual kinship with a location. And that's a huge problem, right? I have notes over here that I'm reading from, so I want to make sure I, I cover everything, you know? That's a huge problem. <clears throat> so what I think happened was Farrakhan had the shine that John Henry, Henry Clark wanted. And truth be told, Farrakhan didn't do nothing with it. Okay, let's just be honest. Now I got the brothers who like Farrakhan and clicked out the video. Give me a second to explain myself and stop being emotionally tied to these people. Give me a second and listen to me. Farrakhan didn't do anything with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, he, he got people off drugs. He helped a lot of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear all that, bro. But I mean, a church could do that. Any any preacher, any any motivational speaker can do all that. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can do all these things. But what has he done for us substantially? Our condition is worsened. Our black community is in the worst condition that it, it has ever been. In fact, the further along we go, the worse our situation here in America has gotten. This is just a fact. We were better off when we wasn't listening to nobody. We were better off when we had no designated so-called leaders. It's just gotten worse for us. We have all these people representing us in the mainstream, and we've been circling the drain ever since. So truth be told, he didn't do anything with it. But what would John Henry Clark have done with that type of shine had he had it? Was he going to pull another Marcus Garvey off and try to say we need to go back to Africa? That wasn't going to work. It just wasn't going to work. Because we have no spiritual kinship to the continent of Africa. Even, even less so now. We never had it and we definitely don't have it now. So, so what, was, what would have been his plan? I mean, fundamentally speaking, John Henry Clark is not against the system. He's not against economics. He's not against capitalism. He just he just wants Africa to get the shine and glory, right? So, I mean, what's the point of it? How does that change our reality substantially? How does that actually affect the way we live in, 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 under this system that we are under as black people? It don't. It don't, bro. Because whether we call ourselves Africans, whether we call ourselves South Americans, Brazilians, North Americans, you know, from America, United States, West Indians, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter what we call ourselves. This devil that we are up against is trying to wipe us all off the continent. And they're working. They, they, I mean, they are doing it. The only thing saving us is the poor countries, man, to be honest. The countries that y'all talk about. It's amazing how through the whole Kojo thing, Africa and South India never got off into the Kojo thing. They never took vaccines. They never locked down. They never did anything. And for some reason, if you look at the breakout map, the infectious map, they don't have Ko Kojo. I mean, it's like Kojo didn't exist, but people didn't care about it. Same thing with the West Indian countries. Kojo didn't exist, but people didn't care about it. It's amazing. So, I mean, you know, you got to question the narrative that we have here, but we won't do that. Not, not the educated blacks, not the, not black Americans, especially because black, I mean, black American women, especially because they are tied to the, to the Democrat party. So they're not going to question nothing that they say. See, this is a problem we have. This is the problem we have. So what would have been John Henry Clark's agenda? He had no real agenda, you know? And this whole thing about everything being Africa, 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 Africa. I mean, we do know that the pyramids over here in the, in, in the Western Hemisphere are older than the pyramids in Egypt. Older. And we do know that they were built by a similar or the same cultural people as the ones that built the pyramids in Egypt. We know this. We also know that the Mayan were actually black people. This is a fact. But you got John Legu, Legizamo. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Legizamo. You know, he did that uh, Latin history, Latin world history for morons or whatever, a little comedy show. And in the comedy show, he talked about how his people went from building pyramids and now they, you know, working in fields and stuff, you know, and, 
Nah, bro, the truth of the matter is that's not your people. Unless you're trying to claim to be part of us, the people that built the pyramids over here in the Western Hemisphere were not your people. They were blacks. See, and this is the problem. He believed that they were his people because the white man said it, said it was his people. Just like John Henry Clark believed that we all come from Africa because the white man said we come from Africa. There is no proof that we all are, are, are one locale people. We are found all over the goddamn world for a reason, people. Every remote island you find us. I mean, it's always been known that the, that the people that you find in the most remote places are dark skinned. They, they're always showing that on TV. Now, whether you want to call them blacks, I mean, it don't matter because we not really black. I have a black shirt on. Do my skin look black? We not black. It's, a, it, it's just a, a nickname, a pseudonym. A, a, actually, it's called an exonym. If you look up the word, that's what it's called. Everything we are called by are exonyms. None of these names are names that we call ourselves by. We sort of embrace the, the, the word black. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, we're not black. We embraced it out of science. See, most of y'all don't even know why we don't buck being called black. We embrace that out of science, the scientific meaning of black. Black is not a color. The color man is, is the white man. Black is the absence of color. It's the predecessor of colors. So we are saying that we exist before everything else exists. That's why we don't mind the, the, the moniker of black or the nickname, the pseudonym, the exonym of black. That's what that means. Because it, it just means the predecessor of, of color. We perceive color. You know what I'm saying? The, the races. In other words, we are the we are that which every race came from. You know? In fact, speaking on that, you have the teachings of Blavatsky, Madame Blavatsky. The theosophical teachings of Madame Blavatsky. Most of y'all don't know nothing about this. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do some research, you know what I'm saying? But Madame Blavatsky said that in, in her 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 root races of, of the world, she said the very first root race were a black people that went by some form of name of Negro or Negroites and they lived in the West, what is today known as the Western Hemisphere and they called that place Lumeria. And the crazy thing is, a few years ago, I seen, a, seen somebody put together a video based on that. I guess he's a student of theosophy and he put together a video based on Blavatsky's teaching and he broke down the root races and he went through all that stuff. The video was like seven, eight, nine minutes long, and he never once mentioned black people. So you know the you know the comment section went clean off. Like, okay, where the black people at? I mean, bro, we got the most populous people on the planet, separated only by y'all labels. We are just ethnic ethnic groups of the same people. We are the most populous people on planet Earth, and somehow this dude forgot to include us in the video about how the about the root races of the planet didn't even mention us and when i met for comment he responded to my comment because I, I roasted him pretty good and the dude was like well i mean i wasn't trying to be racist i, I was just going up the tea i said no you didn't he said because i know the teachings i got blavatsky books i know the teachings i got her books i know exactly what she taught I know what the charts say. In fact, I found the chart and put it up. If I remind myself, I'm going to even put it on, on, on the screen so y'all can see it when I'm talking about this. I put the charts up. The first root race that, 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 that descended or, or evolved directly from the elemental beings were a black people known as Lumerians. That's where, that, that's where they live. They were called Negro, Negroites, Negroloids or something like that. And they, they, they lived in the Western Hemisphere in a place called Lumeria. We were here before the continent started shifting and sinking, man. We were already here. Now, Blavatsky said that, but yet some dude claimed to be a student of hers put together a long video and didn't even mention black people. And that just tells you about the mindset of racism, man. How in the hell can you put together a, 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 almost a 10-minute video talking about the races on the planet and you just completely omit the most populous people on the planet? How they see the, the mindset of these people is strange, man. It's strange. I mean, they they operate on a set of, on 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 a, on a level of confirmation bias that is unrivaled. You know what I'm saying? Some some kind of insanity going on up there, but I, I don't know what it is. 
but John Henry Clark is doing the same thing. You are completely ignoring the All Max. You, 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 you're ignoring Easter Island. You are ignoring, you know what I'm saying, the pyramids over here. They got a sunken city of pyramids all, all off the coast of the, um, Florida and the Carolinas right down there. I mean, you can go on Google and look at it. I mean, you, you can see this shit. Got pyramids all in the water over here. Because this was once land over here that sunk. Continents shift, they rise, they go under. And the whole time we have been here. And this could be verified and proven, but not by way of academia. And that's where John Henry Clark comes from. He comes from the educational system. And that was his problem. That was his flaw. He comes from his educational system. I know I haven't gotten into what he said about Farrakhan yet. I'm going to get into that. Just bear with me for a second. I'm trying to give you a, 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 a the gist on the differences in these men, right? Before I get into that, you know, the, the beef, you know? But, but that's the problem he had because... Our, our history over here is well verifiable. It's easily verified. But John Henry Clark is ignoring all of the history of the black people in the Americas and West Indies so he can tie us to Africa. And he's only he has that myopic view because this is what he was taught by the educational system of the white man. I mean, that's what it is. So he can talk about white folks all he want, but he's, he's still tied to him, you know? And, 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 and part of his problem, you know, you know, he says stuff like, you know, he don't like Farrakhan because Farrakhan won't denounce the slavery of the black Sudanese, you know, by at the hands of, of the Arabs or some shit like that. You know, I mean, seriously, bro. Let me tell you all something, but we got to stop trying to save everybody before we save ourselves. You know, we like somebody in the water that can't fucking swim. And we, we sit up here drowning. We trying to throw our, our life raft over to somebody who can swim. I mean, it makes no sense, man. Before you can save anybody, you got to save yourself. Before we can help anybody around the world out of the conditions that they are in, we have to better the conditions that we are in. We got to get us together first. We got to focus on us first. Worrying about what happens in Sudan, man, it's, it got nothing to do with us. I mean, I feel for the people over there, man, but I mean, they're not the only blacks in the world that are being persecuted by governments and stuff. See, John Henry Clark picked that because that's a Muslim thing. See, that's petty, bro. That's petty. I'm trying to show you what's wrong to do. That's petty. All of the stuff you could point to going on around the world with black people, with the original people, you worry about that one situation? Come on, man. Because you picked that because it's a Muslim thing. Petty, bro. Petty, petty, petty. But let me tell you about my... Something that I noticed about people who listen to John Henry Clark. First of all, he is the father of Pan-Africanism. Right? All these dudes, Dr. Umar Johnson, all these dudes, uh, 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 what's the other dude? Oh, 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 oh. oh. Orozco, I can't think of the dude's name, but you know, I haven't seen him online in a while, but you know, he used to be real popular at one time, you know, always debating these dudes, you know. All these Pan-African type dudes, they come from the John Henry Clark school of thought, you know what I'm saying? And one of the things that I've always noticed by all these people is that they're very unfriendly. Very, very, very unpleasant people. I knew a dude, he was an associate of mine's. And me and his brother used to talk all the time. We both, you know, in the early days, um, when I was building my business at the flea market before I, no, I already had the locations in the mall. I had, actually, I had two of the locations in the mall already. And, um, <clears throat> but I still had the flea market location. That's why I used to be at sometime on the weekend. And me and his brother used to be out there talking all the time, just running it, bro. Running it, just, just running it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, me and his cousin, his cousin's like a little amateur filmmaker from New Orleans. You know, a little brother with dreads and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, Amir, something like that. Ha Hakeem, Hakeem. I can't remember what his name was. You know what I'm saying? I lost track with him. You know, I lost contact with him over the years. But uh, good brother, you know. The other dude was his cousin. I won't say his name because he's an asshole and I'm about to roast him, right? So the other dude was his cousin. So me and the dudes would talk all the time, man. Dude was real cool, man. Real, real cool, brother. And then for some something happened. I haven't. I didn't see him in like two weeks maybe three weeks, and when he popped back up, dude was a different person, 
I mean a different person. He had such a nasty disposition towards me. I mean, I mean, it was almost unfriendly. But I mean, you know, truth be told, I was confused. I mean, I didn't know if I should steal on a nigga or what. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I didn't understand what his energy was coming from. It was like, it was like a real confrontational energy that he was giving me. And I'm wondering, Kush, are you reading this right, bro? Because you and this dude got no beef. Y'all cool. Y'all always talk. Y'all always run it. So what's going on with this dude? But the longer he sat there and talked, it started coming out. He started using words like our 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 uh grandfather, or godfather, or, or high father, something like that. John Henry Clark, you know, said this, and John Henry Clark's. I'm like, huh? I'm like, this dude that went started reading John Henry Clark, and now he got an attitude towards me. Then I realized later, it's because of Muslim. John Henry Clark have a problem with Islam and, 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 and Farrakhan. So this dude got a problem now with me, a dude that he knows I'm not an idealistic Muslim. I'm not a religious person. For me, I am Muslim by the, by, by the definition of what it means to be a Muslim. I'm one of peace. I, I practice physically our Islam, the ultimate peace. That's how I move through life. This ain't got nothing to do with rock eyes and, 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 and salats. This ain't got nothing to do with Ramadan and all that stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't do all that stuff, bro. I'm not a religious person at all. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? This is Asiatic words, but this is Afro-Asiatic words. These are these are our languages. These are words in our ancient languages that describe actions and behaviors. And I live according to those actions and behaviors. Islam for me is a way of life. It's not a religion. And this brother knew that. But he still had a nasty attitude towards me. I know, and you know what, Trey? We never talked again since. I mean, I just didn't bother speaking to him no more. I didn't, I didn't understand what that was about. So, I mean, from that day forward, I mean, I wouldn't try to, and, and to be real about it, he didn't even try to speak to me. I mean, nigga, act like I did him something. And I didn't do him anything. You would swear I did this dude something personally, but it was all because he started being indoctrinated under a, a, by a man that had a hateful disposition towards all religions. Clark didn't like no religions, and I'm fine with that because I don't, I don't mess with religion. But I'm not mad at the religious people. He had an angry disposition towards all religions, but in particular Islam because he could not stand Farrakhan. John Henry Clark was an angry, bitter man to the day he died. All because he felt like he never got the shine he deserved. He felt like Farrakhan took his shine. But the truth is, Farrakhan never did nothing with his position. All he preaches is economics and going to school and becoming good citizens. He never tried to take us off this system. But John Henry Clark didn't say nothing about taking us off the system either. I don't even see what the beef was about because both of the men, uh, their end goals would amount to about the same thing. Nothing. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. And I mean, that great debate that John Henry Clark got me, he roasted them white folks, man. Man, did he roast them? I mean, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to listen to if you're a black person. But I mean, but outside of him roasting them, he still said a lot of things that's wrong. It did not begin for us in Africa, bruh. We black Americans and West Indians have never been Africans. Never. We've never been Africans. So when somebody come with a disposition like that, they are just misleading you, bruh. You know? So anyway, um, my conclusion is this all stems from jealousy. You know, Farrakhan kind of played him short, you know, didn't just ignore him, didn't pretend like he didn't exist. And um, John Henry Clark went to his grave mad and angry and bitter and jealous because he always wanted to shine that Farrakhan had. So what he said about Farrakhan being able to change the automobile industry, if Farrakhan just said that he won't cause to be made by black people, it was silliness, man. It was silliness. Farrakhan never had no kind of power to change the automobile industry, bro. He can't boycott riding a limo unless black people build him. They were like, okay, nigga, catch the bus. 
I mean, it's just, it's silliness. I mean, he, for such an intelligent man, he resulted uh, 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 to, to some of the same type of baseless uh, uh, attack arguments that you dudes do me online. Same things y'all do right now, bro. The type of arguments that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. None. Just don't make no sense. Even the one where he talked about, um, you know, the Minion Man March talking about he sure he 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 gathered all those people and, and don't mention Africa one time. He said not doing that is like building a body and, and, and not putting in a heart. But that's that's not true, bro. That's see, that's your ideology. The problem is John Henry Clark had no foundational ideation outside of Africa. That was the problem. See, everything he said was just based on. See, he sounded good because he was he was pushing back on racial uh, 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 academia, right? That that that's basically what he was what he was battling, and he was good at battling them. But he still never had a viable program for black people. He still said nothing that would have changed our lives. Because you think the world give a fuck whether we call ourselves African, black, nigger, negro, Lumerians. I mean, it don't matter. It don't matter, bro. Our condition is what it is and it's going to remain what it is as long as we are under this system. But you don't have nobody ever talking about getting from under this system. Until now. That's why Brother Kush is here. That's why Asadu Allah is here. I am here to get us to understand that we need to get out this system. John Henry Clark never told this system, let my people go. Minister Louis Farrakhan never told this system, let my people go. What they want is for us to become better pieces of the system. They want us to, to crawl deeper into the system. There is no place inside this evil, wicked thing for us. We need to exit this stuff. We need to get out of this stuff. And that's my mission in all of this. I'm not here to take sides on either one of them dudes. Both of them either failed or was going to fail. I mean, John Henry Clark didn't have a program. He never got his shine on. But, I mean, you, I heard enough to know that he, wasn't, he, he had no program. Farrakhan don't have no program. He, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he just enjoyed... The limelight, you know, the way he lived. Come on, bro. We got to do better than that, man. And I know I just made a lot of y'all mad, but I'm just being real. Yeah, that's what they all say when they say something coonish. You know, they being real. I understand. I understand. You got me there. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay-Z said, oh, fuck it. You got me. But I'm just telling y'all, that's what it is. One dude booze, the other dude was bitter. You know what I'm saying? One dude, he wanted, one, the, one dude wanted power, the other dude had the power. But the one dude that had the power did nothing with it. The dude that wanted the power wasn't going to do nothing with it. Because I don't hear none of them dudes talking about let our people go. You know, all y'all Pan-Africans, y'all need to go back to Africa. Stop trying to shove Africa down our throat. If y'all think that that's where y'all from, leave. Just leave, bro. Y'all are causing division amongst us. Y'all whole pro-black concept is causing division. It's supposed to pull us together, man. But y'all, y'all whole pro-black teaching don't they don't bring us together. That that it divides us. It's separating us. It's it's causing it's causing friction among us. If that's your ideology, if that's your if that's your version of pro-blackness and black unity and all this shit, we don't need it, bro. We don't need it, man. Y'all can take that shit and leave, bro. What we need is real unity. You know, the reason why we clash over everything is because of these crazy pro-black ideologies. The minister and the nation is not, they don't teach nothing that's really different. It's pro-black, just not, not wrapped in the same cloth. But it, it equals the same. We cannot, look, either we're going to band together and do something or we're not. But what we can't do is, is, is use pro-blackness and black pride and self-love to justify hating on black people. We can't do that no more. We can't do that no more. We can't do that no more. Focus only on everything black people, you know, black, we, we shouldn't date interracially. We shouldn't do it. Why? We, we have problems in, on the inside. So, so, so a black woman 
should not just go ahead and find somebody she can click with. A black man should not just find somebody he can click with. We should spend our lives in this, this perpetual hell, this perpetual system of mad cycle of madness, fighting with people who feel like they have, have, have some type of rights over you, don't want you to be your own human. We don't respect each other. And part of the reason why we don't respect each other is because of this pro-blackness. I mean, you got to give Minister Farrakhan your one thing, man. They not really separating us. They not doing that. The Nation of Islam is not separating us. But this pro-black stuff separates us. It divides us. It splits us. Uh, that talk can get to your throat, man. You know, I, I'm still not used to it, people. I'm getting there, though. But you know, this pro-black stuff, man, it divides us. The nation don't divide us. But John Henry Clark, who said the term, I will never march with Farrakhan. Why? When Jesse Jackson and all of them came out against Minister Farrakhan, he still came to their aid. He still supported them. He would not say nothing bad about them. I mean, it is what it is. Whew, I needed that water. Y'all got to excuse me, man. Whew, needed that. But it is what it is. Most of y'all long clicked off the video anyway, shit. The people that's here, my soldiers anyway, so y'all y'all gonna give me a pass anyway, you know what I'm saying, shit. Most of these motherfuckers you know, got too mad already about what I was saying, so they gone. So anyway, all the soldiers, all the diehard soldiers that's still here, man, I'm much, much appreciated, man. You know what I'm saying? Mad love and respect to all y'all, you know? But I'm gonna end it right there, bro, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all get the point. You know, there's really no more to say about it, you know what I'm saying? There's no more to say about it. Look, <clears throat> I want to give shout give a shout out to everybody that's been donating. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been actually getting donations from, from a few women too. You know what I'm saying? Surprise, surprise. You know, y'all talk bad about the sister, but sometimes the sisters recognize real, bro. You know what I'm saying? They recognize real. I like to appreciate all y'all. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I what I respect about y'all is that I don't give shout outs for 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 the um for the donations. And y'all doing it out the kindness of y'all heart. Y'all doing it because y'all believe in what I'm trying to do, and and that says a lot about you. To know that you're doing this and there's no super chat being it up on the thing where people can see what you're doing, your name, you know what I'm saying? So you're doing it out the kindness of your heart. You're doing it because you believe, you know what I'm saying? You're doing it, you know, you might not feel everything I'm saying, but you know, you're doing it because you believe that, you know, I'm offering something of value to our people, you know? So, you know, give yourself a round of applause, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'm going to close it out right here, man, you know what I'm saying? But y'all see the donation stuff on the, on the screen? Venmo and Cash App at the Black Alpha, PayPal at RealBlackAlpha at gmail.com. And um, on that note, I think I'm going to close it out. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. the Black Alpha. So I'm. Um